Welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I am Chris Clements. Hello, Sean. And we are just over a week away from the election. I know. The the most consequential election in human history. Well, we say that every every cycle, don't we? The election were democracy itself. This is one, in the balance. I mean, it, we say this every two years. This one really this does. This one matter. really counts, like the last one didn't. Um, and, and, and every two years, you hear this democracy itself is in the balance. Yeah. And uh, I, I, saw, I saw a clip the other day of Hillary Clinton warning against f- election fraud in 2024. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that. I think the, the Russians the, are at it again. The woman who denied was the election, the original election denier of 2016. Right? Yes. And, and then Stacey Abrams was right behind her. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Stacey Abrams is the governor of Georgia. She She's is running for she is the rightful <laughs> governor of Georgia. So says Stacey Abrams, Whoopi Goldberg and uh, all sorts of election. Yeah. Deniers. I feel like so we'll get into the election side of things. But if you are a active progressive a committed progressive, I got to believe that you're not having a very good week with things starting to trend better for Republicans across the country and the takeover of Twitter by Elon Musk now yeah. on the brink. He, he, brought in, he brought in the kitchen the sink kitchen the other sink. day. What exactly did that, what was he trying to say there? I, I think it means he's going to throw everything out, but maybe the kitchen sink. Oh, so he was sending a... He was so maybe sending a, a... But I a, thought in the staff meeting he said, we're not doing a 75% staff reduction. Did he? I, that's the impression. I mean, I think I read that. I think a lot of people are just packing their things up regardless. Well, it's a, the, the culture of Twitter is going to change for sure. Um, it's been... Well, there's been a lot of snowflakes that work there. Yeah. Well, he was, he's very clear about why he, he bought Twitter. I mean, here's, here's his reasoning. The reason I acquired Twitter is because it is important to the future of civilization to have a common digital town square where a wide range of beliefs can be debated in a healthy manner without resorting to violence. So I think he's overstating it a little bit. Uh, Typical American does not bother with Twitter. Uh, It's very much a bubble. Now, maybe maybe this is his way of A dumpster of fire is it's the way you term it. Yeah. Maybe this is his way of trying to expand the footprint of Twitter in the more general populace, less of the elite bubble, more like a Facebook or Instagram. I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch. I, I know that there's a lot of angst from people about whether he's going to put Donald Trump back on the platform. Oh, I imagine he does. Whether Trump will go back on or not, I mean, is oh, he can't help himself. Yeah, I know he's got tens of millions of followers. He can't help himself. Yeah, to, to immediately have that megaphone back. Yeah. Oh, he's chomping at the bit, I'm sure. But here's the thing. We don't have to pay attention to everything he says. I no. mean, this is where the left and the media, in particular, really get it wrong. They created this guy. Uh, yeah. The media created this guy, and. If they stopped reporting on his tweets, then it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I mean, they're, it, it is astounding to me how much they created this guy by giving him way more of a platform than what he was, frankly, deserving when he ran for president the first time in the primary. And then it's, oh, my gosh, look at this. What, a, what This guy's insane. Well, stop reporting on him. Well, they... Uh- there's a lot that goes into that, though. They thought it was entertaining the way he was running his campaign. They gave him a lot of free media. Well, they and got then a lot of- and they also thought that it would be best if he got the nomination because it would then it'd be a shoe in, a shoe in that Hillary Clinton would win the election. Yeah. What they Look found out was out. that she was more hated than Donald Trump. Right. As I've said on this podcast before, I think the you know the 2016 election was not a choice. It w- and the ch- because the choice that you had was a false choice between the raging narcissist and the sociopath. Right. <laughs> and, and, and by all accounts, Hillary Clinton is precisely that. 
or both rolled up. I was going to say which is which, which is, is which. which. I mean, you could you could you can flip a coin on that as well. But that was the choice, and and the the negatives towards Hillary far outweighed the negatives towards Trump, in in that regard. It, well, in 2016, in 2016, and in, in two in 2020, his negatives spoke for themselves. Well, in 2000, although his policies, you can argue at this point, seeing what we're going through right now, were were right for the country. Yeah, he had the good. He had solid policy. The question is: Are we seeing a Hillary resurgence? Is she now going to step back in and try to run for president in twenty twenty four? I mean, I think it's abundantly clear at uh, this point that Biden cannot run, and there, there, there's both the well, especially personal if, if if what you're predicting, as we were walking in here. You said very plainly, you did. No one wants to be a Democrat right now. The, yeah. the the bloodbath is boiling, and it's 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 going to be happening. And and I and I w- I'd love for you to share some of the things that you're seeing out there as well. But but yeah, it, Hillary is the perfect example of of a politician of somebody, like I said, borderline sociopathic. Who, if she sees blood in the water, she's going to jump right in there and and make the fatal blow if she can. And and I think she's seen another opportunity. That's all she's wanted to be for the last 10, 20 years as president. In fact, you can make an argument that during the Clinton presidency, she was the shadow president, or at least she saw herself as that. Right. So this is something that she wants. Yes, she does. Now, does she want to go up against a Trump again? Does she want to go up against a DeSantis? Mm, okay. We'll see. If, well, I... If it's trending in that direction. Yeah, I... I just think it's time for the boomers to be done. We've had a boomer president since Clinton. I mean, think about that. We went from the silent generation to boomers, and they never went away. When Barack Obama got elected, he's the the young boomer, late in the boomer era. I was like, oh, this will be almost on the cusp of yeah. This will be the last one. It's now going to be the passing of the torch. Yeah, we went. <laughs> we went the opposite direction. Yeah, I it, mean, Clinton, well, I think, Bush, I think, Clinton. Think about this: Clinton, Bush, and Trump were all born in 1946. Yeah, I, I think. And now we have Biden, who is even older. Getting away from the angry white guys would be a good thing for the country. I, yeah, and I, you know, it's. I think it's. The millennials have not proven themselves yet. It really is time for Gen X. Oh, you think? To take charge. Well, we're the only generation that's actually got our heads on our shoulders. Well, what is what is DeSantis it. exactly? He's a, he, he's Gen X. He's Gen Xer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, I, I think you're right. It's just a matter of you know, it, are all the are all the stars going to align to make that happen? That that remains to be seen. Everyone keeps saying, "Well, Trump's running." Well, I still am not convinced that he is. So, yeah, I'm not either. You know, I mean, I think he he wants to, but I also know that he doesn't like to. I mean, he doesn't like to be a loser. So, if if it looks difficult because of legal issues or whatever, it's going to be it'll be interesting to watch. But what we will watch in just over a week is a complete shift in what happens in Washington because Republicans will capture the House. It's now just a question of what's the number. I'm now s- predicting that we're going to gain, that the Republicans will gain 25 plus seats. 25 plus? 25 plus, which is near tsunami levels given the number of actual competitive seats out there. I mean, we're not going to get 60. That's just, that's, there's not 60 to get. Uh, there's about 33 toss up seats. There I saw, the, I, I saw yeah. the other day, I saw a graph and it's yeah. 33 toss up seats and so many, you know, Certified Democrats, he's certified right. Republicans. Hard Republican, hard Democrat. And then I think the Senate's going to be 52-48, or, well, it may be 51-40. Yeah, let's, let's it, go because, there a little bit. Because I believe that the Herschel Walker-Ralph Warnick race is going to go to a runoff. Yeah. Because I don't know that either of them can get to 50% because of the third-party candidate. And that's, you know, in Georgia, the law is that you have to have 50. So that creates a runoff situation. Uh, here in Arizona, there's a pullout uh, that's got 
Blake Masters down one. I understand that there's uh, a couple internal, but not internal to the campaign, but you know, non-public polls that have it tied. Mm. Um, I think that pollsters still have a hard time pinning down a Republican vote. So I, you know, I think I've said this before that any poll that's got a Republican within three, the Republicans likely to win. Yeah. So precisely of your point and the point we've made before about it, just Republicans aren't polling. Yeah. They're not answering. They're not answering polling They're So if you look across the map, they're not clicking on the surveys yeah, coming look, across their phone. You look across the map of places like in August where people are saying, Oh, look at this. Florida's competitive. Rubio is going to win in a landslide. <laughs> Did you watch some of that debate the other day? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, Talk Rub about slapping. Yeah. Rubio is fine. <laughs> I'm not even going to say the word I want to say, but it was brutal. North Carolina will stay Republican. Yeah. Wisconsin will stay Republican. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, these Ron, are, Ron, know, is, Ron Johnson's done a tremendous job. That, he really that, has turned the, the yeah. race around. Well, he's turned the race around. But but now we're getting in, and we were talking about this earlier a little bit. We're getting into that last two weeks of the campaign, last two weeks, where the self-described, non-political, fly-by voter sort of maybe kind of sort of gets engaged. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those voters, it, it has to do with their, their economic circumstance, mm -hmm. number one. Is, is I mean, the question remains, is your life better than it was two years ago or even four years ago? The vast majority of that voters in that category are going to say, well, no. No. And then who do you like? Right. Likeability, affability becomes a big part of the election. Right. And, and, and in terms of the Senate race here in the state of Arizona, you've got to think, you know, Blake Masters is not a great candidate. He's, he's a nice guy. He's got good intentions, I think. But he's a very affable guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's playing into his favor. It's because if you've ever met Mark Kelly, not so much affable. No. Not the friendliest guy, you know, in the room. So it well, pays Kelly, not to be a jerk. Yeah, Kelly has the problem that many fighter pilot astronauts do, and that's ego. Ego. Yeah. They think they're kind of the shit. Yeah. And that's, look, being a fighter pilot and an astronaut, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. I, I think he it. has another problem. He doesn't really live in Arizona. Well, but nobody's good. pointed that out. Where is Mark Kelly? Yeah, where is Mark Kelly? It is, it is amazing to me how little he has actually campaigned. I mean, very little in-person campaigning. Anyway. Well, and that's the other part of campaign. And this is where, you know, we, we've made fun of Carrie Lake here on the show you know, early on in the primaries. And, we're, and it's been very interesting to see what she's done since the primary in terms of reaching out to all sorts of different groups mm -hmm. and and being available yeah and 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 you know meeting everyone talking with everyone and that's how campaigns are run well especially and, in and being contrast. oh by the way and being affable being likable and the more and more people i talk to are like well i'm voting for carrie like well, why are you voting for her? Well, I know, you know, she wasn't maybe my first choice for her, but she just is a really nice person. I like her, and I've known her. A lot of, a lot of people I know have known her for forever because of her stint on mm -hmm. local Fox News, and they like her. Therefore, well, the they're, she's gonna, they're gonna vote for her. The them. contrast with Katie Hobbs couldn't be brighter. I mean, the, it is amazing to me how badly the Katie Hobbs campaign has gone, and they have not done anything to try to fix it. I mean, they should have done the debate. We've already had that conversation. And and there's these videos of her, you know, running away from people. They, she doesn't want to talk about politics. It's like, I don't understand why she's running. Yeah, just play those all day long. I don't understand it. Just play them all so day long. So Lake's going to win big. And so yeah, so what are you thinking? I mean, right now, oh, it's gonna be RCP five plus. average has her up by anywhere between two and three. Yeah, she's going to win by more than five. And uh, I, I do believe Blake Masters will end up winning. Uh, as, and there's the, the only caveat I'd give is, is what happens with Mark Victor, the libertarian. If he gets 5%, that makes it very hard for Blake. But if he stays at 2 then I think Blake pulls it off. It, what's the most fascinating thing for me is there's been over $100 million spent by Kelly and the Democrat side. $100 million. That's Kelly has not broken 50%. No. In the polling. No, we talked about that uh, 
at another podcast. That, I that you cannot believe it. In fact, that was the podcast we had with Cody Ritchie, and he made the point, a very astute point, that you know that he felt by having met Blake and 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 all the candidates that he felt that the race was winnable by by virtue of the fact that Mark Kelly had not broken fifty percent. Right. right. And, and that means he's stuck. That means no matter how much money he's spending, he can't get any more traction. Yes. And now what's really interesting is all the negatives on Kelly are being highlighted. All of a sudden, the last two weeks of the campaign. You know, wh which, is, which is timely. That's when, yeah. that's, that's when the flyby voter, as I, I call it, starts to pay attention. The indifference, as yeah. Stephen Shattuck years ago called him. Yeah. Uh, people who just, oh, yeah. There oh, yeah, an there's an election. election. I probably should vote. Uh, maybe I should vote. The interesting, so there's an interesting The dynamic. persuadables, as yeah. David Schweiker the, called them. The interesting dynamic right now is that, you know, Arizona's been an early voting state for more than 20 years. And typically we'd have 80-plus percent vote by early ballot. This year we're seeing a much slower return of early ballots than in previous cycles, way, way under 2020 returns. And down, you know, tens of thousands from 2018. Republican or Democrats have a slight advantage over the return rate right yeah. now, driven they by Pima do. County. Yeah. And, uh, well, they don't always do. Because Republicans, you know, before Trump, Republicans were very happy with early voting. We used it all the time and, you know, used it to our advantage uh, in the sense of how we message. So we have a lot of people out there saying, oh, don't send your early ballot in. Walk it in on Election Day. That's the only way to guarantee that it's going to be counted. Oh, by the way, you can walk it in now. Yes. <laughs> or you, you can mail it in You now, can mail it in, but frankly. if you want to walk it in, and if you, you can. If you are a person, if I, I'm talking directly to those listeners who think that there is a problem with elections processes, that maybe you believe that there is a lot of fraud or some fraud. Maybe you believe the election was stolen. And you, one of the things you're frustrated with is, why does it take so long to get results? Well, if you don't mail, if you have an early ballot and you don't mail it in before the first, yeah. you're part of, part of the problem. Yep. Because what's going to happen is if you walk that early ballot in on election day and hand it to the election voters or put it in the box, whatever, it then goes to the elections department where it will not be opened until after the election. Yeah. Because they need to verify your signature and then they'll open it and process it. So if you want your if you want results faster, then get your freaking ballot in. Yeah, or go down and stand in line and vote. Yeah, I mean, it just so any race that's that's I and I think this will be the case in the Senate race. I think what we'll see is that Kelly probably leads Masters in the first dump of ballots. So at eight o'clock on election night, you know, polls close at seven. Eight o'clock on election night, they'll release the the early ballot returns from any any ballot that was returned before like Monday yeah or maybe it's Saturday uh, and I think that that's going to favor Democrats because they just right now they're returning more ballots we'll see if that changes over the next few days that'll favor the Democrat candidates then the election day voters will be released later that night yeah probably much later 10 11 o'clock most likely at, at, if, if, at, if even that yeah um, could be later and for races that aren't too close, like Kerry Lake and maybe some congressional races, we'll see Republicans in the lead. But races that are close, maybe a couple state legislative races, maybe the Senate race, the Democrat will be in the lead. The lead will be narrowed significantly from the first dump, but it will take a few days for those late returned early ballots to be processed and counted before we get final results. And so we're probably gonna be sitting here on Thursday, mm -hmm. after the election, not totally certain what the results are on some of these races. Yeah. Just a heads up. Just a heads up. So we'll be talking about this for... Which which leads to, you know, more dissatisfaction with the system and more yes, misunderstanding exactly. about it's how just it a, works. A vicious it's just, cycle. It's a complete of vicious cycle. You're it's part like of the problem, and then you complain about the problem, and you're part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then it leads to, uh, you know... I, Accusations of fraud and, then and abuse. People and who say, else. "Oh, we should hand count every ballot." My ba I voted my early ballot. I have not returned it because I'm one of those that likes to see what mail and contact I get from campaigns. 
being an early balloter, but not returning it. But I have voted all of it. Yeah. 84 items on my ballot. 84 bubbles I had to circle, I had to fill in. Yeah. 84. That's a lot. Can you imagine hand counting? Three million ballots that have somewhere between 70 and 84 different races. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's, it's insane. This is insanity. Yeah, that's crazy. <sighs> no, I agree. And, and, and those candidates advocating that just, it's not realistic. They don't understand the process. No, it's not realistic at all. But, but uh, so looking at overall the national landscape, We've talked about Florida, we've talked about North Carolina, we've talked about Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Oz was down, yes. Fetterman was seen as the, you know, the guy that was gonna take that, that's a Republican seat, that's really important for the Democrats and their quest to get a majority in the Senate, not be tied. Fetterman, I mean, think about this. A guy who had a stroke did a debate and Katie Hobbs can't do a debate? That's, <laughs> that's not a good look. That's not a good look. But. Well, and I, I, I think Fetterman came off as somewhat sympathetic, and, too. And so, yes, you saw, you you have an empathetic well, demeanor, and so you were... I don't, I wouldn't agree with John Fetterman on the color of the sky, but I watched part of the debate, and I'm like, hmm, this this could go either way, So uh, depending on who's spinning it. So, the you know, I, I, I read a lot of conservative blogs, and it was the worst debate performance in human history. I'm like, well, yes, but but how does that play? But how does it play? Right, I think th this is going to cut. It, it's probably going to cut both ways. It probably marginally helped Oz, because I think there's a lot of Pennsylvania voters who have been told by the Fetterman campaign, he's fine. The doctors say he's fine. You know, they haven't yeah, that, really seen that came through. him. You that know, came in through. action, and so if they had this belief that oh, he's fine. He's recovered. You know, maybe he needs a little help with the teleprompter, you know, to, because of his audi auditory issues. If they watch that debate, they're probably like, hmm, this guy's not as, as with it as I thought he was. Yeah. And so that's going to create some questions. Well, and I think Dr. Oz, to his credit, I mean, agreed to everything pretty oh, much in yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. The, the debate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, parameters. Use a teleprompter. Use whatever a teleprompter. You need to do. do whatever you need to do. Let's have this debate. Let's have it. Let, let's do the it. The transcription service. Yeah, the transcription service. And townhall.com right now is, is reporting that Oz calls Fetterman's bluff, offers a do over debate. Yeah. It's like, because, yeah. Okay. The camp, if, the if, if something was wrong with the teleprompter or you can figure out your auditory cues, oh, sorry. But let's I do mean, it again. You know that the Fetterman <laughs> campaign. Because I'm going to get my message out even clearer. Right. You know the Fetterman campaign doesn't feel like it went well when they are blaming the teleprompter, the, the, the transcription service, yeah. as the problem. Yeah. Well, and they're trying to spin it however they can spin don't it. don't think that was the problem. Yeah. Well, well what's, what's really amazing in, in this is that Fetterman was up during the summertime over 10, 15 points. Yeah. And it's just collapsed. It's completely. collapsed. It's collapsed. And that's, that has, I actually think that has less to do with his health. And a lot more to do with his policy. And people yeah. starting to say, wait a minute, this guy believes that we should let people out of jail. Oh. He believes we should get rid of cash. Empty bail. the jails. Yeah. I mean, there are the crime in, in, in Pennsylvania, particularly Philadelphia, probably Pittsburgh, other places, not a good thing right no, now. No, it's, it, it's out of control. Yeah. Just like in Chicago and Seattle and Portland and well, Los and Angeles. Speaking of Portland. Oregon is a race to watch. Yeah. There's a potential that the Republican will win the governorship in Oregon. Which is unbelievable. There is one there one Republican in Oregon in the House delegation. There could be three after this next election. I mean, this is there's some definite shifting happening there. Happening there. Um, there's a race in Washington that looks very good for Republicans uh, on the House side. And then there's five in California that could be flips. Uh, and California is losing a congressional seat this year. Yes, yes. For the first so time ever, ever in its history. Ever. Um, and then, obviously, here in Arizona, we've got Eli Crane against Tom O'Halloran. And the so what's your prediction district. there? Eli wins. Does Eli he go wins. away with it? Yeah, I think he does. And then Juan yeah. Siscomani. Tom has been completely absent. 
from that district. I feel yeah. like he, well, it's a tough district. I look, that's a tough yeah. district to represent. It's so big. It, it, it's big, but you can, it's you unwieldy, can be, as I like to say, you but be, you can do it. You can do it. You've done it. Not well, as a congressman. Not but as, as a congressman, as a businessman. I've done it. <laughs> and, and I know that district like the back of my hand. Right. And it's a very conservative district. Take out Flagstaff. Yeah. I mean, Flagstaff being what it is, but it, even the redrawn portion, I mean, conservative with a, I would say with a big C, actually. You, you take out Flagstaff, it, you have a lot of conservative Democrats, right. traditional Democrats. You know the district well, having grown up in, in Cholo. And it, if, if a, uh, you know, I've always said if, if a Republican is willing to go to every little town and hovel and reservation and everything and just show up, they can win. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think so. I think, obviously, Eli's done that. So I think credit Crane to wins. him. I think Juan I think wins. wins in uh, the Tucson district. Uh, and the the question is whether Kelly Cooper can can beat Greg Stanton. And yeah. I don't think that's outside the realm of possibility at this point. Yeah. Um, Kelly is. Uh, he's been on the show. He's on s several weeks ago. He's running a very principled campaign. He's been part of that community for a long time. You have to, you have to wonder if the carpetbagger um, you know, allegations towards Stanton, him not living in the district, actually living still in North Central Phoenix, right, and and probably should have run against David Schweiker. Well, but <laughs> but he didn't want to run against David Schweiker. Why? Because David would clean his clock. Yeah, he knew it. It is interesting that he that he decided to take a pass on running in the district that he lives in because it was against Schweikert. I think that might have made the race against Schweikert more competitive. It would I have think, made it I more think, competitive for sure. I think Schweikert's going to end up winning pretty handily. Uh, that's a that's a Biden district, by the way. Like Biden won that district by a point and a half. So uh, Schweikert winning that is, and it, it'll grow Republican over time. Yeah, I think uh, so. So. Well, I mean, David does a good job with constituent services, mm -hmm. and he he's in the district. He's visible all the time. He's he's out there. So, and that's what people want. Yeah, there there, there so many f folks are willing to give you a pass on your on your party affiliation if they know that you have their best interests at heart. Right. And uh, you mentioned Juan Siscomani. I th I think you're going to see um, a lot of party crossover in that race. Yep. A lot of Democrats, business people. Who are frustrated with the Biden administration? Frustrated with the Biden economy? Frustrated, you know, in general with Tucson, and and the way it's going, uh, are going to cross over and, and vote for Juan. Yeah, and Juan is a great candidate. I great, mean, he's a, he, he's, he's out a, of central casting. Yes, yes. You know, an aide to so. the governor, um, Hispanic. You know, long time. You know, married to Laura, who's who's an executive here at the Arizona Chamber. They've got like five kids. Five or six. Yeah. I mean, it's. I mean. It, he, but I'm he more is worried. I'm more worried about those weekly plane rides yeah. go on to uh, to Washington D.C. and the effect that has on your family life. Yeah, because that's hard. It is hard. That's a that's a brutal commute. Same for Eli. I mean, if, in order for him to be, if he wins that district, wins that race against Tom O'Halloran, in order to be an effective congressman in that district, you have to be present this day forward. And he has a young family as well, and yeah. I hope he's able to do that. Yes. And yes. you have to allocate your staff. You know, in the right way to make that district work. Yeah, um, you can't have a lot of staff in D.C. No, you want to have most. You got to have them all. The you got to have them in Flagstaff, one in like Sholo, one in Globe, that area, in the mining area, and then one in, in Pinal. 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 And if you don't have district directors in those areas, people are going to feel like they they're left out, and they're going to if they feel like they're left out and they don't get any attention, then they're not going to go the other right, way. right, because they're they're relatively apolitical, conservative, but apolitical. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a constituent services heavy type of uh, district. Oh, that needs to very be much so. Paid attention very to. much so. And and you know the the other piece of that district also is, are uh, the Indian res reservations, both Navajo and and I guess there's three three Apache reservations. And the way you win those, or at least win win some of those votes, is just showing up. Yeah, <laughs> just show up. Help them out. Say, say that you want you know you want to be their congressman. Right. So, zooming out again. Zooming out again. Uh, no more granular. We look at Nevada. It's going to be a huge upset. I think Adam Laxalt is going to win. You think that's an upset? I do. Why do you think that's I an think upset? I think most people view it as an upset because he's going to end up getting a pretty big big chunk of Hispanic voters against yeah. the first Latina 
senator that we've ever had. Uh, so that's very interesting to me. And it's because of the policies. I mean, the, the economic policies. Yeah. Which, it's killing people uh, financially. The well, and the COVID policies, too. Yeah. You know, people have not uh, have said that COVID is not playing a, a part in this election. It won't play a part. It's playing a huge part in this yeah. election, other especially places, in the gubernatorial races. Other places to watch that could be surprises would be Mark Ronchetti running uh, for governor in New Mexico. It's looking pretty good. Well, That's I mean, interesting. in that regard, my point exactly. COVID's played a big part in New Mexico. They were shut down longer than they should have been. And she kept them shut down longer with mass mandates and everything else. So that is playing a huge yeah. part in that election. Colorado, be very interesting situation in Colorado. You've got a Senate candidate, business guy, O'Shea, running against Bennett. Nobody saw this as anywhere near competitive. It's become competitive. But Trump has been very critical of O'Shea because O'Shea is not an election denier. And so he's like, don't vote for that guy. And, and DeSantis, DeSantis has come in, and yeah. he's helping yeah. O'Shea. So uh, this will be a pretty interesting. I, I would find it very fascinating if O'Shea ends up winning, uh, what that makes Trump look like, because, I mean, who in the world says, well, you're, you're an election denier, so I'm not going to support you. I'm going to vote for Bennett. I mean, come on. Well, I mean, you see what's playing out. And we we mentioned it before in in Georgia, yeah. With Brian Kemp, he's going to win that that race handily. Handily. And and to your point about the Senate race, I mean, probably won't know who who wins that race because of the runoff situation. But hopefully, this will tell Stacey. Oh, to, Abrams. Abrams to to you know she can go write more romance novels. There's a lot of. Your, did she do that? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. She oh, should. She racy. Should. Racy romance novels, really? apparently. Well, you know, yeah. don't quit your day job because you're not going to be the next governor. There's a lot of complaints amongst the Democrat base uh, that her vaunted turnout operation is not doing what it should. The Warnock people are very unhappy. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, so there's a lot well, of well, I mean, for Stacey Abrams, finger it's been more about celebrity than it has been about politics. I think. Yeah, she's she's been you know, carted all over the country to tell everybody how she you know the election was stolen from her. You know, again, the one of the original election deniers. Yep. And uh, and yet, you know, she's going to lose handily. Yeah. So, but her celebrity may rise again. You know, you just never know. Yeah. You, if you look at so if you look at the races. The Republicans, where there's a Republican incumbent. What do you think about Mar uh, Michigan? We haven't touched on Michigan. Oh, we I haven't think touched on New York. Tudor Dixon has a shot. I wouldn't have put that. So I had written Michigan off because there's an abortion ballot initiative yeah. on the on the ballot, and I had figured, you know, in places where there's something on the ballot about abortion, that will hurt Republicans. The the abortion issue in general, mm, we're seeing that it's not necessary. That that that's tapered off but where there is an actual ballot initiative i've kind of assumed that that meant that there would be you know there's actually something to go vote for or against sure. on the abortion issue but tudor dixon is is making it very competitive for gretchen whitmer and gretchen whitmer go you know you go back to the lockdown problem this, this she's got some issues if, yeah, if it weren't for the abortion ballot initiative i think tudor dixon would be in a strong position to win hmm. i think it's because of that that it's it's been less likely but yeah because it's still again the, the the COVID issues there with gretchen whitmer you know playing a huge part played a huge part in the debate the other day right when when gretchen whitmer claimed that that schools you know kids were only home for three months and Tudor Dixon said, what, what world are you living in? You know, some kids are just now just going now back going to back. school. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the if you look at all of the different Senate races. Uh, I mean, this is this this could be a 52, 53 Republican majority that that would which be which would be astounding that that would be a reckoning. Yeah, I think. And so in, that in goes back full regards. circle to where we were talking about if. Republicans take 20 plus, 25 plus seats in the House. If the Republicans take the majority in the Senate, I just think that that sends the message and Joe Biden does not run again. Oh, no. I mean, I think that 
I don't think he's your, I, you know, it may be that I, his I think, health will I fail him before that, but I think that he will probably, he and Jill will make the decision that it is a no based on the repudiation of their policies and how difficult it would be because we're going into a recession. Does he want to try to run for reelection having lost the House and Senate and in the middle of a recession and all the things that they've passed is, are going to do things to make it worse? I mean, and... I guarantee you the House Republicans and maybe the Senate Republicans, if they're in the majority, are going to be investigating Biter Hunt, Biter Hunt, Hunter Biden. Biden? Hunter. <laughs> Easy for you to wow. say. Wow. <laughs> Easy for you Hunter to say. Hunter Biden. Yes. Well, they've been investigating Hunter Biden. Well, I mean, Ron but Johnson have... and Charles Grassley issued a report in July of 2020 on Hunter Biden, yeah. which was summarily ignored. Right. But and it was pretty ignored. extensive report. And, and but the, when they're in the majority, they have a significant more uh, influence and power on getting information out, collecting information, getting information out, and actually have the ability to to pass, you know, legislation that would have some impact. So, okay. So here's a question, that a big question: If Republicans win the majority, we haven't talked about Alaska. Uh, and we're what's going to Alaska. Alaska. We're going to lose Alaska. We're the ranked choice voting is going to prevent Sarah Palin from being. Oh, well, I don't care about Sarah Palin. I, 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 for prevent Republicans. So it'll be Peralta. Uh, you think you think so? Yeah. Really? I do. Versus Elisa Murkowski or. No, Murkowski will win the Senate. You think but the Murka House, the okay, House yeah. seat is. Yeah, Murkowski that, will win her Senate seat. You think so? Yes. OK. But but the Democrats will. OK, win Murkowski the House wins the Senate seat. Does Mitch McConnell become majority leader? Oh, yeah. Okay. He'll be the yeah. You I think? mean, yeah, he'll be the majority leader. Make no mistake. If he takes these guys to the majority, he's gonna be the majority leader. There won't be anybody running against him. No. Even a Rick Scott. No. 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 Well, we'll see. That is not. And Kevin McCarthy cards. becomes speaker. Yes. I think with a large enough majority. Yeah. No. I think if it was slim, there there would be a challenge. By who? Maybe Scalise. No. no, Scalise. So. No, no, he'll be the majority leader. Scalise will be the majority. No, he'll be the speaker. Scalise will be the majority leader. The big race is the whip race. Yeah, you got Emmers, who's the NRCC chairman. Mm -hmm. You've got. I always forget the names. I did a podcast with Lisa Di Di Pasquale yesterday, and I couldn't remember the names. I should have looked it up. But anyway, <laughs> there's a whip. You've race. had a lot going on this week. There, yeah, and, and House leadership. Beyond the speaker and the uh, majority leader has not gotten my attention lately. Well, we're, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> no, I don't want to count <laughs> the there, eggs there before could, there. There could be a lot of drama between, the chickens now, before they're between now and then. Well, I mean, look, I think the, Demo the, Re the Republicans have done a good job of, of staying on message. The Democrats have been flailing for messages. And, uh, you know, Emmers told the conference at the beginning of the year, don't start measuring drapes. You know, everyone yeah. assumed that this was going to be a great year because of the historical. But then the Dobbs decision and all kinds of different things with record amount of fundraising on the Democrat side. Oh, yeah. So it's going to prove once again that money doesn't buy you votes. Yeah. Money's not yeah. everything. It's, for it, sure. it's at the end of the day. And, and we talked about this time and right time again. Right here in Arizona is going to be. Ground zero. It will be the number one example. Yeah. It, time and time again. Talked about it. It is likability, affability, you know, your ability to connect personally with voters, your, 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 your innate ability to go out and meet them and sit down with them and talk with them and they can relate to you and you can relate to them and you make impact. Yeah. So one race we haven't talked about oh, and I forgot to talk about yesterday. Yeah, that's okay. We're ranting. We're moving along. Ohio. And the oh. reason we haven't talked about it is because it's done. J.D. Vance is going to win. Handily. Well, I think so, too. Yeah, I don't think but there's any there's, question there's of that. Been, I mean, for the last number of weeks and months, there's been like, oh, Tim Ryan's making a... He's kind right. of imploded. Uh, I, I, the debate was interesting in that respect. I mean, I, that's why you have debates. Well, I think J.D. did a very good job. J.D. did a great job back. in the debate, and, and this is why you have debates. You have debates so that you can present yourself to the voters. Um, I, don't, I don't think... I, we didn't talk about the, the governorship of New York either. I mean, no, yeah, that's Lee Zeldin. Zeldin's done a he great did. job of storming. We'll see if he can be put over, you know, 
be put over the top. I d- and the only way that happens is if Democrats, you know, well, his leave. his strategy is to and, get and come to him is to really go after the crime issue in the New York City boroughs and. But he had a good debate po- performance did. on the issues. He did. Maybe not so much. I heard an analysis the other day that uh, that debate was a little bit like the uh, Nixon JFK debates. If you watched it on TV, you thought that she won. If you listened to it, you you were sure that he won. Mm. I don't know. I the, the one of and the having parts that watched I saw, it, I was like, eh, the maybe parts that a I bit. saw, she was when he was hitting her, he, she was very uncomfortable and did not I mean there is definitely I mean a part of debate prep is how do you keep yourself composed while you're under attack and she didn't practice that no well no she got visibly she got rattled irritated and rattled yeah and he was his, the points that he was making were great and her, some of her responses in terms of why why is why is locking up criminals so important to you um, I don't know because it's not happening. Right, because <laughs> maybe it in the, keeps in the, the streets safe in the city of New York. People are dying on the subway, not in the subway, but actually on the subway because they're yeah, being pushed, being pushed into the in subway. the subway and being run over by subway cars. Yeah, you know maybe that needs to change. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a crazy year in terms of analysis. It's even crazy. Everyone yeah. has all these different predictions, and well, this and yet the data is, is is showing a wave, but it's just a matter of how, how much. Right, right. Is it a little wave? Is, is it, it a big wave? Uh, or is it a tidal wave? Is it a tidal wave? And, uh, you know, the former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, has it at 40. I don't know what... what 40? Yeah, what T he's in the House. 40 seats. I don't even know how that's possible. Yeah, he was touting about it on his podcast the other day. I was like, what? what I'm going to have to look at the numbers. I, I kind of don't mean know you're, gonna, you're flipping Democratic seats, and you're flipping a lot. Well, a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um... Look, wow. If it's 40, whew, I guess it's possible. I think he's counting there on, on traditionally blue districts in Texas going red. It would have to be a bunch. It would have yeah. to be more than Texas, too. There would have so. to be, some, well, the, the Sean Patrick Mahoney, the DCCC chairman, he very well could lose his seat. Yeah. Which would be a big deal because he ousted, you know, he he bigfooted uh, a rising freshman star, uh, and who was supposed to run in that district, and then that guy ended up running in the district against Jerry Nadler and Carolyn. Yeah, Maloney that was a big mess. That one, yeah, that was a big mess. So, well, yeah. there is. We told but you that this week, would be we're, interesting, we're and a little over a week away. If you're not into politics, then you're probably bored stiff. But you should be in interested in politics because at least for the next week and a half and then a little bit after the election i mean because it's going to have some impact over what happens in the direction of the country for sure well at least with a republican conservative victory you know that your taxes aren't going to go up anytime that's right um you might see a government shutdown next year maybe uh i kind of think that that'll i I think there's going to be heavy pressure to get that taken care of in the lame duck session oh you think yeah I think they're going to try to preempt that right now. And, yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It'll be interesting to see what the mark, how the markets react immediately, like within the first couple of days after the election. On the ninth. Uh, well, I think the markets will react overly positively because there'll be some predictability with regard to um, tax, tax, policy. Re- t- yeah. tax policy. Not so much regulatory policy because, right. because that is still going to be – I mean, the, the regulatory policy against oil and gas is still going to be a disaster, yep. which is why you're paying more for gas. It's not because of Vladimir Putin. It's because of the policies impl- implemented by this administration towards oil and gas. Right. And But t- on the issue of taxes, that is probably the most dramatic yep. impact, especially on large, large corporations. Exactly. And your, you know, your, your investments. So... Hang in there. We're almost there. We'll have uh, some last-minute updates next week. Might even have a special guest. Oh, that would be great. I've really enjoyed all the new signs I've been seeing sprouting up all over the community, (laughs) you know, touting the the sins of Mark Kelly. One one sign I would really love to see is, remember, Mark Kelly doesn't live here anymore. Has never lived here. <laughs> He's never lived here. He lives in Houston. Where is Mark Kelly? Where is Mark Kelly? In the ether. In the ether. Along 
Let's 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 vote him out to space. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Bye bye. See ya.